We've got just the right body moves to get you in shape and feeling great. Body Moves, weekday mornings at 10 on Channel 5 CKY-TV. Good evening. It is a disaster of unthinkable proportions. The death toll from yesterday's devastating earthquake in India now stands at 21,000. And as rescuers push aside the tons of rubble, it continues to grow. The quake struck in a remote area of the Indian Peninsula, making it very difficult for supplies and medical items to get through. To make matters worse, monsoon rains are now hampering the search for bodies. We get the latest now from Alex Thompson. In the town of Kilhari, near the epicenter of the earthquake, the destruction is almost total. And where some walls withstood the shock, the roof has gone, crushing all beneath. A survivor stands here, numb with shock. Others, distraught with grief, try to describe the scale of this disaster. Here, someone has salvaged a few household goods, piled by the roadside in a pathetic heap. Rain has begun to yeah. fall, which hampers the army convoys trying to get to the scene along narrow country roads. The need for shelter and food is acute. Heavy lifting gear is also vital, and though there's little hope that anyone has survived beneath the rubble of their homes, three people were dragged out alive today. The danger of disease increases by the hour, and local supplies of drinking water are already contaminated. Many on the scene have had to use their bare hands to drag the dead from the rubble, carrying away the victims in flimsy blankets. The open streets have been turned into makeshift morgues, though already more than 3,000 people have been cremated. The death toll is India's worst natural disaster in 50 years, and the bodies are too numerous for some makeshift fires that have been lit by the survivors of the quake. For those who were lucky enough to escape, there is still the grief of returning to find husbands and children dead. Then, almost all communication lines are down and some government officials have arrived to listen to the needs of the survivors and then begin to plan the logistics of getting aid and relief into this disaster zone. Some makeshift hospitals are functioning, but there's still a desperate need for medical equipment and supplies. But for this little girl, no more than 12 years old, that helps only just getting through and has arrived too late. She died soon after these pictures were taken. Already makeshift refugee camps have begun to spring up, but it's still too early to tell whether the relief effort will be able to keep them going. And there's already the danger of looting, and the army's attention has been diverted from the relief effort to patrolling the streets. Now, here in Winnipeg, Hindu and Indian organizations are waiting for direction from the Indian Red Cross about when they can start sending relief supplies over there. But so far, the city's Indian community is at ease because no family members have been reported lost in the quake. We get more on what's happening locally from News Hours Vera Hool. Chances she must have lost a son at least. Babaru Hegnikar is the priest of the Hindu temple here in Winnipeg. So far, relief for the victims of the earthquake in India is being handled by the Indian Red Cross. So far, what they have said is uh, they are doing okay. You know, so far they don't need. If they need the help, they will call. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I have left a message with the High Commissioner here. Heather Clark says even though there are no requests yet, they are preparing to be ready for when their help is needed. The first idea came was in what way we could help as uh, people from India and uh, prospering here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the idea was fund collection, money, medicine, or clothing. The priest of the Hindu temple says, fortunately, no one here in Winnipeg has suffered the loss of any immediate family. I found only one person has an aunt staying at uh, Sholapur, which is quite away from that place, but still closest, largest city. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she called them and uh, found that they are doing all right. Dr. Atish Manier says he was stunned at the news of the devastating quake that shook India. Manier says he has family and friends in Bombay that he was worried about. I actually phoned uh, one of the surgeon to find out. He says, no, Bombay had a tremor, but it's not much disaster. The earthquake that turned villages into rubble hit early Thursday morning. So far, the death toll is nearly 21,000. Vera Hool, CKY News Hour. And there is more Manitoba help on the way to India. The Mennonite Central Committee says it will supply food, clean drinking water, and temporary shelters 
for the thousands of people who have been left homeless. If you'd like to help out, you can call the office, offices rather of the Mennonite Central Committee here in Winnipeg. In other news tonight, it looks like Ottawa may have to pay out millions of dollars to the spouses of gays and lesbians. Today, a labor board ordered the federal government to give a gay employee in a same-sex relationship the same family benefits that heterosexuals get. The union representing public servants is hailing the decision as a massive victory for same-sex couples. Suanna Marchant has the story from Ottawa. Between them, they have 46 years with the federal government. Diane Kilby and Richard Goyette say it's only now that gays and lesbians will begin to be treated equally. That's due to a grievance filed by a public servant in Vancouver last fall. His request for family and bereavement leave was denied because his spouse was male. Now a board has ordered the federal government to honor those benefits. The Public Service Alliance of Canada calls it precedent setting. The decision enhances the dignity of all workers in the federal government since it removes another element of discrimination from the workplace. Oh, yes. Diane Kilby has a grievance pending about benefits for her same-sex spouse. The ruling doesn't automatically cover every case, so she and other lesbians and gays are still a bit wary. What was it, 1969, Pierre Trudeau said that the state had no business in the bedrooms of the nation, and the Tories, they aren't prepared to let us out of the bedrooms and into our kitchens and into our living rooms and allow us to live common, ordinary, everyday lives. So, I don't know. I don't know that I'm optimistic, but I'm certainly absolutely ecstatic about this decision. I'm happy about the decision only to the extent that it's yet another nail in the coffin of the legalized discrimination in this country against lesbians and gays. So, the federal government has two options. Accept the board's decision and end any discrimination against same-sex couples, or appeal the decision to the Supreme Court. It has until October 25th, Election Day, to do that. And we'll have more on the election coming up later in the newscast. But right now, Sylvia is here. Hi. Yeah, it's so nice working with it's you so again. It's so nice to it's see you. It's been a while to see yeah, you here. It has. I'll tell you, Clay, I was almost tempted to um, call in sick today, to be away from work, so I wouldn't have to talk about this crummy, crummy weather. You know, you know what I found today? What? I was looking on the weather monitor. On, uh -huh. on this date in 1992, it was 30 degrees. <laughs> it's pretty And depressing. now look what we're getting. I've had so many complaints today. It's going to be a really chilly, blustery, ugly night. Uh, there is a weather advisory in effect for almost all of southern Manitoba. That's because the winds may cause reduced visibilities in the south, but uh, it looks like it will get much better for the upcoming weekend. In uh, the south tonight, minus 3, central regions minus 5, and in the north, a low of minus 10 degrees. Uh, I think quite a few records were shattered for daytime highs today. It was really blustery yeah. out there. I'll, I'll have the full forecast for you just before 6.30. It is looking better for the weekend. By the way, you want to go out sometime this weekend? <laughs> Always get around that. Change. Thanks, Sylvia. <laughs> There's uh, still more to come on CKY News Hour. If you believe the law of averages, the Bombers should beat Hamilton tomorrow by a score of 39 to 11. And Steve Vogelsang will tell you why in the first half of sports. And in the spotlight tonight, get limbered up because it's time to twist. We'll show you the dance craze that never stopped. And Canadian snowbirds may be getting their wings clipped before they get on the airplane. Stay with us. I'm Glenn Cassie. The New Democratic Party is in trouble in the polls across the country, except in Manitoba. We'll look at that story next on NewsHour. I'm Lisa Keller. Today, Winnipeggers get a glimpse into a vision of Canada. That story next on NewsHour. You're watching CKY NewsHour with Jim Wicks, Sylvia Cusick, and Steve Vogelsang.